there is some bad news. Is a splitter and a bay window a completely unrelated vehicle to what a transporter is? Hello, I am absolutely buzzing to be bringing you this video today. Yeah, sorry about that, but I have waited a long time. Ever since the original concept version of the ID Buzz came out, I've been really, really interested in it. Been a long supporter of the Splitty, and I couldn't wait for it to come out. And now I've had the opportunity to actually drive one. But is this the electric vehicle for the future for van life? What actually is it? Is it a car? Is it a transporter? We're going to have a look and we're going to find out. And more importantly for me, do I think that the ID Buzz could actually replace my own transporter? Let's begin with the looks, and there is no denying that you can tell what the great, 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 great ancestor of this vehicle actually is, albeit this has got a much more modern, potentially a futuristic twist to it. From the front, you're greeted with a big smiley face grinning at you with its huge nose, the badge that is. Yes, it is huge, but it has to be. If it was any smaller, it just wouldn't look right. Personally, I was taken aback by how much nicer this is actually in the flesh from seeing it in the pictures. It is far better. If you haven't seen one, get down to your local VW dealership and have a look for yourself. A huge thanks from me must go to Murray Volkswagen in Plymouth who actually lent me their demonstrator. Excellent service, really knowledgeable staff, and I am very, very grateful. The only downside was I could only have it for two hours and there was so much I wanted to do. Hence, I'm filming this bit actually in my own van. I just wanted to spend time with a vehicle, drive it around and just get to know it the best I possibly could within two hours and also film a bit of footage. And if you haven't seen the first video, which I did on this ID Buzz, just a nice Christmas Day cinematic story. I shall pop a link at the end. Anyway, carrying on with the exterior, there are many similarities to the transporter. You've got the big two front doors up front, you've got the twin sliding doors behind that, and then you've got the tailgate. And if you haven't got the electric rear sliding doors, they've still got the swoosh bang of the transport. How cool is that? However, it is certainly a lot more modern looking. One big difference though is the standard size of the alloy wheels. I believe the Transporter T5, T6 standard wheels was 16 inch. You could opt for factory options of slightly larger, but only up to 18 inch. The ID Buzz starts at 19 inches. The wheels that are fitted to this are actually 21 inch wheels. But I've even seen a couple of photos on Instagram where one of the converters already has put 22 inch wheels on it and also put air ride on it so it's dropped right down. These converters have already started work on it and they're even planning full camper conversions already. Up from the wheels there is plenty of glass. Not quite the 23 bay window splitty kind of glass but still a lot of glass and this is really beneficial when you're driving the vehicle. You're just surrounded by glass, which obviously means that you've got extremely good vision to be able to see all your surroundings all around you when you're driving, which can be very helpful, prevents you from hitting things. So into the interior. Wow, when we open the doors, we're greeted by this light, modern, minimalistic interior. The color scheme is dependent on the spec, and this particular one, as you can see, has got the light colored interior, but you can get it in black where all the plastics are black, the steering wheel's black, the seats are black. But from factory, you can actually spec different colored materials, different fabrics. You might have seen in some of the press photos, there's green inserts in some of the seats, there's orange ones, there's blue ones, gray ones. It's all down to personal choice. And what you like, I might not like, and what I like, you might not like. Very, very personal. And VW have given you that opportunity to spec those items from the factory. The seats up front are captain seats and these got the armrests, which you will recognize for the transporters, but they are much more comfier than my T6 seats. And these are really adjustable. In this particular model, with it being the first edition, it's actually got electric seats, but not only the electric with all the different adjustability, but they're actually heated and massaging. We really are entering into a new era. The steering wheel in this vehicle will be familiar to a lot of you. Looks very similar to the, the modern other VW ones and a replacement a lot of people are putting in the T6s at the moment. But what's behind the steering wheel, this certainly isn't familiar to you. It has a very modern digital display panel providing all your vital driving information, your speed, your range, your trip, your battery life, sat nav directions extra. And next to this, 
on the infotainment screen which you'll be used to in your vehicle this particular one especially because this is the first edition it's got the much bigger screen but this display will provide you your sat nav your infotainment system your climate control and also it being ultra modern it's actually got far fewer physical buttons than what you'd be used to it's operated by touchscreen and also gesture control with just a few dotted around physical buttons. There are lots of storage options throughout the vehicle and the front is no exception. Lots of cubby holes, deep pockets in the doors, a reasonably large glove box and lots of little bits scattered around the dash including places to put your phone and also wireless charging. One of the questions often asked as far as the transport is concerned, does it have cup holders? Well, the answer to that one is definitely yes. There are places to put your cup and even in the back, which I will come on to. Something else which is in abundance throughout the vehicle is USB ports and these are USB-C. Plenty of options to be able to charge your mobile devices. It's even got one next to the rear view mirror at the top, which I believe is probably for a dash cam which is just a great idea because everybody should have a dash cam. The center console or buzz box as it's actually called has got storage as well. And in addition to that, there is an ice scraper and a bottle opener included with it. How clever is that? This console can be removed if you don't want it though, which will provide you easy access from your front to the rear. Speaking of the rear, now as standard, you've actually got seats in the back which actually slide a little bit not the full-on California rails, but they do move forward so you've got some greater legroom and they recline. These are comfortable and I'm sure your passengers in the rear of the vehicle are going to be really pleased because there's actually a drop-down tray behind the drivers and passenger seats. It's actually got another cup holder. Perfect. And then just above this, there's a little pocket for storing small items in. You could potentially be putting your mobile phone in there and they can even charge the phone. But in the passenger doors on both sides, there's USB-C charging points. That's really useful. What more could your passengers in the rear want? Apart from TVs and a fridge and things like that, but that's for another day. Further back, accessed by the electric tailgate, we've got the rear loading area. Size-wise, I'll come onto this again in a future video, but this being the passenger vehicle, it is slightly narrower than it would if you've got the cargo version, which I do know converters are looking at at the moment. The cargo version's not got all the plastics in the rear, so it is actually slightly wider. But as you look in here, there's plenty of room. It's got a split storage area where you can see here you've got the, the trays, which I understand are standard. You can be putting your charging cables in there, your essential items, your first aid kit and other essential items which I'm sure you've seen in my other videos by now. But this is also removable as well, so you'd, if you didn't want that split level storage, you can actually take all that out and then you've obviously got a full floor to ceiling um, loading area which could be more useful, you've just got those options. But with this panel in place, with the split storage, and you put rear seats forward, flat down, it creates a large area which could it be used for a bed? Hmm, could I? So what is it like to drive? Well, first impressions, it is really fun. It's much better drive than my current transporter and any of the T6.1s which I've driven. With the vast amounts of money which has been invested in newer vehicles, you would kind of expect and hope that a much more modern vehicle is a better place to be and drive. This model's powered by a single motor which on paper has a published range of 258 miles arguably enough on paper for most people's daily use if personally i think about how i actually use my van at the moment i think 90 percent of the time that would be fine for my daily use i think it would be acceptable if it was 258 now i know it isn't going to be 258 but what actually is it what kind of mileage would i get out of it if i was using it for what i generally do on a day-to-day -day basis but this is a lot of people's concerns with our evs the infrastructure isn't there there's not enough charging places there's somebody at the charging places i'm not going to be able to charge well that might have been a thing a few years ago but it is improving every day i know there's new companies being set up now which is so lame is to go out and install more charging stations it is improving all the time so i need to test it 
but actually driving the vehicle well it doesn't feel that big and yes i know the dimensions are smaller than a transporter but still it's still a reasonably large vehicle but it doesn't feel it and i think part of this is down to what i said about the glass the glass being all the way around it you've just got so much visibility you can see pretty much everywhere now it, this as i said this rides on 21 inch wheels but it, it just seems to float along it's been so well set up it's such a joy to drive it really is and it doesn't feel like a van which and i know a lot of people are saying it isn't a van it's more of a replacement for the touran or an suv but more on that to come it's so smooth, the power's delivered really well, and it certainly is not sluggish. I really like it. I genuinely really like the driving experience of it. Very, very short time, I know. I really, really do want to drive it for longer, but my first impression of the driving aspect of it, I love it, absolutely love it. But I do need to spend more time with it to find out the practicalities of actually driving a vehicle like this taking it out on some real van life situations and see how it copes see how the electric side of it stacks up if i've got my van i know i can get five six hundred miles out of a tank but actually what am i going to be able to do in this because i know it does fluctuate if you turn your heating on it is going to drop a little bit in the colder weather it is going to affect that so i need to get out and find out how it would actually affect me and to see whether i could live with the vehicle and get to know what could be the new modern van life era a little bit better. And really find out what the vehicle actually is. Now some say, like I've said, people say this is a Touran replacement and not a transporter replacement. But if you think about the original press releases, the way it was being talked about, you look at the latest press releases and you've got a splitty next to the ID buzz. Why are they putting them together? The splitty, the original micro buzz is this a micro buzz and if it is does that mean that the t6 t5 t4 isn't actually a descendant of the splitter and there actually is a completely different range of vehicle anyway is a splitter and a bay window a completely unrelated vehicle to what a transporter is and the id buzz is actually a relative of the bay window and the splitter it does raise a question i don't know the answer but the fact is regardless of what it is where it's come from what its descendants actually are there are currently transporter conversion companies looking at converting these vehicles into campers modifying them putting bigger wheels on them changing the suspension putting air ride on them putting body kits on them but these are transporter converters so do they think it's a transporter or just a new vehicle to add on to that van life tag and some say that there is actually confirmed reports that VW will be bringing out a camper version of it themselves. It certainly does appear that it is a new van life vehicle, regardless of what it is. If there is going to be a new California, it is actually going to be some time before it comes out. But in the meantime, VW are bringing out some other models, which I think have actually officially been confirmed those being the long wheelbase model and also a GTX model, which is more sportier, which will hopefully have dual motors uh, providing that four wheel drive. And hopefully because of the size of the vehicle, they might actually be able to squeeze a bigger battery in there, which really, really would be beneficial and certainly would appeal to a lot more people if that range was increased. But if you're liking the sound of all this and you are really keen, there is some bad news, but, that bad news is the same for all manufacturers, and that's the supply. You can't just go into your VW dealership tomorrow and actually get a VW ID Buzz because the waiting list is so long. It's going to be at least 12 months before you're going to be able to get your hands on one. However, it really could be worth the wait to get your order in. I really loved my first drive, and I cannot wait to drive it again, hopefully for a little bit longer. I really would to test out its capabilities for a much longer time to see how it copes with real life. So please do subscribe if you want to delve in on my journey at looking more into the ID Buzz. Or if you're into transporters, I've done lots of videos. And if you haven't seen my recent video on my Christmas story, do have a look at that here featuring the ID Buzz. Thanks for watching. Take care. I hope to see you soon.